What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about wall joins in Revit. If you're a beginner in Revit this is probably quite annoying, the fact that Revit uh, doesn't really allow you, or well, at least it doesn't look like it's going to allow you to uh, modify the join between two walls and when you have two walls especially if they have different structures different layers it's really difficult to get Revit to do exactly what you want it to do so in this video I thought I might dedicate like a special video where I explain just how Revit looks at wall layers and how it looks at joining those wall layers so you can you will never find yourself in a situation where you have to worry about how can you join wall layers and how do you get Revit to do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, now I got the idea for this tutorial from one of my uh, subscribers on my website BalkanArctic.com that's going to be the first link uh, in the description just below the video. Uh, he was having trouble with this uh, with these wall layers so I thought why not create a dedicated tutorial. Uh, now if you check out that website there I have all of my beginner intermediate as well as advanced level courses over 100 hours of content where I take the extra time to go step by step and explore all of Revit's complex topics as well as workflows. Uh, and uh, it's easy, really easy to find all of, the, uh, all of the different topics, navigate through the websites, uh, track your progress and so on. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. Uh, so let's go straight into models and then to new. And for the template file, I'm just going to be using my custom Balkan Arctic template. And if you want to check out my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. Uh, next, I'm just going to click OK. And then let's let Revit start right up. Okay, so once we're here uh, uh, in the kind of level one, what I'm going to do is just place a few walls and then we're going to be taking a look at the wall joins. So what you want to do is go here to the wall command and then I'm just going to be using one of the basic walls that uh, even come with rabbit out of the box, like the brick on metal stud, for example. And let's create something that looks I don't know, like that. Then let's create a different angle here, perhaps like this, there we go. Uh, next, let's go again to the wall tool. I'm going to place one wall like so. We can make this a bit smaller. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then let's add an additional wall. And for this one, I'm just going to change the wall type to something like perhaps this one. And then let's place that wall here. Perfect. Okay, so here we have a few different joint conditions. Uh, here we have like a one angle, here we have like a sharper angle, and then here we have a couple of perpendicular walls. Uh, now the first thing that you want to take a look at is going to be the detail level, so make sure that it's set to core or to fine because if it's at the course, it's going to look like this and then it's, well, it's not much help. So let's switch them to fine level of detail and now we can see all of the important layers. Okay, so when it comes to mastering joins in Revit, the first tool that you want to explore is over here on the modify tab and there we have the geometry panel and one of the tools there is the wall joins, seems fairly straightforward, you click on the tool and this is what that looks like. So the tool basically consists out of the modify tab and then here you have a bunch of tools. Now as you can see all of the tools are grayed out because first you have to select an existing wall join and then you can start playing around with those tools. So let's select this join here for example because it's a, an interesting join and then once you click it's going to add these little lines here uh, in between layers just to show you uh, which uh, wall has kind of the priority and uh, which one doesn't. So here you can see that this wall, the horizontal one, takes the priority because all of the layers of that wall go all the way through to the end. And then from this wall, well, they kind of stop. Uh, now, uh, let's now take a look here at the Modify tab. Or So here we have first the previous next buttons and then here we have three join conditions or three join types. So you have the butt, which is this. You have the emitter, which is this, kind of 
at an angle. And then you have the square off, which, well, square is that off. So let's go back to the butt. <laughs> so uh, if we just start with this one, we have the next option, which is just going to toggle uh, which wall takes the priority. So it's either the horizontal one, or if I click next, now it's the kind of the, the angular one, and so on. Same thing goes with the meter, but here, because we don't really have a priority wall, they're both kind of the same priority, it doesn't really do anything. And then finally, we have the square off, which just squares off one of the walls. So here it's squared off the uh, angled one. And if I just click on next, it's going to square off the uh, just the, the horizontal one. So here the horizontal one finishes with a square and then this one continues on. So that's one set of options. The next set of options is going to be the display. So the display uh, is either view settings, uh, clear, don't clean join or clean join. Well, let's take a look at what does this mean. So for that, I'm just going to select one of these here. So let's go here to wall joins, go to this one, for example, and then let's start with clean join. Well, nothing changes. Let's start. Let's take a look at don't clean join. So when you click on don't clean join, it's going to take the kind of the main wall and just continue it. And then the second one will go up to that wall and stop. So it's not going to kind of uh, interlock the layers. It's just going to have it kind of up to that point and then it completely stops. And then you have the option use view settings. So what does this mean? Well, when we set to use view settings, you will see that it's the same thing as clean join. But where do we set that up? It's obviously somewhere in the view settings. So to explain that, I have to hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the modify, kind of escape out of this. And then uh, for the view settings in the properties panel, when nothing is selected in the view, your properties panel will show the view properties. See, it says floor plan level one. Now here in the graphics, which is the first little tab, you have Let's see, it's somewhere over here. And here it is, it says wall join uh, display. So for the wall join display, it currently says clean all the wall joins. Uh, now you can see that this is grayed out and we don't really have any ability to control this. The reason for this is if you want to control this parameter, you have to set it up to course level of detail. So once we're in the course level of detail like so, we can switch this to clean some uh, uh, clean same type wall joints and then hit apply. And as you can see, it's going to add this line here, but it's not going to add the line here. So as this says, clean same type wall joints, this type and this type are the same. So uh, it's going to clean this up and it's obviously not going to add a line there, but because these two types are different, it's going to well, not clean it, and it's going to include that line. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, if you have this, uh, if you have a situation where you don't want to show those clean wall joins, uh, you can control that uh, here in the properties for the view. Anyways, let's go back to our modify tab and go back to our wall joins tool. So let's select uh, another wall join like this. And then finally, let's take a look at the final few settings. And those are allow join, allow join or disallow join. So currently it's set to allow join and this is obviously joined together, but you have the ability to disallow that join and it's basically going to break that. So now if I go to the modify tool, select the wall, as you can see, I can move it around and it's disjoined. I can even place it here. Now, when you uh, basically disallow a wall join, a little icon here will appear called allow join. And if you click this at any point, it's going to join those walls back together. So you do have that ability. So you can keep them joined, you can keep them unjoined. It's really up to you. Now, moving forward, uh, let's talk about how does Revit figure out which layer is going to go where. So just taking a look at the this join that we have here, <clears throat> it's quite obvious that Revit kind of figured out which layer should go where. So this layer goes up to here, then this layer kind of wraps around there, this layer joins with this one here. So it does use some sort of a methodology, but let's explore what that is. So what I'm going to do now is just switch the scale to 1 to 20 so we can see all of the layers a little bit better, but we still see that outline here. Perfect. 
Okay, so now let's take a look at how Revit determines all of this mess. So if I select this vertical uh, wall, uh, this is the uh, exterior render on brick on block. Now, if I just go into edit type and go into structure, go into edit, it's going to display all of the wall layers that are included. Now, the really important thing to keep in mind here is going to be the function of the layer. Now, what I'm going to do next is just use the snipping tool here to take a quick snip of all of these wall layers, just like so. And then I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. Okay, let's cancel out of this. And now let's select this wall here, the bottom one. Now, this is a different wall. This is brick on metal stud. And what I'm going to do now is go here into edit type, go again to structure and open up wall layers. Now I've took this snip because now I can compare these two wall layers and use that to explain the join that we have here. So this upper table is displaying the horizontal wall layers and this bottom table is uh, displaying the vertical wall layers. So let's start off with the middle because that's the most important part, which is the core of the wall. Now the wall core is always inside of the core boundary. You can see that here and down below here. So we can notice that the main core uh, layer or the main structural layer, because usually these structural layers are inside of the core boundary for the horizontal wall are is this layer here. Now here, if we take a look, that's this metal stud layer, and that's set to structure. Now, if we take a look at the upper layer, here, the structure is concrete, uh, concrete masonry, I think. And then that's the structural layer as well. So Revit will join the uh, structural layer of one wall with the structural layer of the other wall. And that's why this goes all the way up to this layer. So that's why these two are joined. Then let's go a bit further. So what do we have next over here? So if I just take a look at here at the wall layers, that's the substrate here. So the st substrate is the next one. So that's uh, the plywood here and nothing goes up to that plywood layer. So none of the layers from here join up with this plywood layer. Why is that? Well, if I take a look at this uh, upper kind of wall layer structure, we can see that we don't really have any substrate layers. We have, let's switch to this, we have this membrane layer, we have the thermal layers, we have the finish layers, but no substrate. That's why nothing joins up to this. Okay, let's then go further. What's this layer over here? So after the plywood, we have the membrane layer, that's zero thickness, so we should probably not think about that because that's obviously not this. So the next one after that membrane layer is the thermal air layer. That's the kind of the larger one. So that's this one over here. So that thermal air layer connects both with this layer here and with this layer here. So if we take a look at the second table here, we have a couple of thermal air layers for this wall, the air one and the cavity fill. So the cavity fill is this one here and the air layer is this one here. So because both of them are uh, classified with the function of thermal air layer, they're going to be joined up with the other uh, walls thermal air layer, which is this one, the, let's see, uh, the air layer in this case. So that's why the air joins up with the air and this one, the cavity fill kind of stays there, but just goes up to that air layer. So as you can see, Revit is just going to figure out the functions of all of the layers within the wall, and it's just going to try to connect all of those functions together. So thermal air layers will join with thermal air layers, structural layers will join with structural layers. And then here we have finally the finish layers. Uh, for the horizontal one, we have the brick, which is this layer here. And then that joins up with here we have uh, both brick as well as uh, this, uh, I don't know, some exterior layer, whatever. So both of them join up to that layer. So just going over that again, when Revit sees uh, layers of the same function, it's going to join all of those together. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, let's not save this. Uh, when it comes to uh, figuring out which layer is the more important one. Next, the, the, the next thing that I want to take a look at is going to be the join geometry 
tool that's over here so it's on the same geometry panel and more importantly the switch join order so in some cases such as this one this structural layer goes up to this structural layer but this one takes priority see this structural layer continues and then this one just goes up to that one let's say you want to switch that you want this one to go all the way through well we can try to go here to wall joins and select that and go to butt but we don't really have any option to change that it just doesn't allow us to do so so if that doesn't work the next option would be to go to join geometry and try to join these two and then let's go to switch join order try to switch that but it doesn't work well it doesn't work because they're still joined together so Revit is kind of leaving that up to the kind of the up to the wall joint to figure out but there is a cool little override we can unjoin these two walls and one option would be to go to the wall joints the second option would be to just find this little button the wall uh, end right click and then you have the disallow join which is kind of going to kind of break it up next you want to extend this layer up to here or this wall up to where the structural layer stops and then you want to go to join geometry join these two together and this is what we get so we've managed to get the structural layer to be kind of the main layer and then the, uh, the, the the horizontal wall is kind of the secondary wall in this case you can see that even this layer kind of continued off so we can we have switched the priority of the wall not by using the join not by using the join wall joins tool but instead using the join geometry tool so that's just something to keep in mind uh, it is possible to make any overrides and then finally if nothing works and you're still not happy with your wall joints you want to add something a little bit more complicated perhaps the wall layer structure uh, doesn't allow you to do something or something else you're having some issues well at any point you can rely on the trusty old uh, cut profile tool so the cut profile tool it's here on the view tab uh, so cut profile you basically select that you select any layer that you want to change for example I don't know like this layer I can select that I can add a line like so make sure to have the arrow pointing up saying I want to keep this and not this I hit finish and I have stopped that layer then I can go to cut profile again I can select this layer for example and I can extend that layer like so just switch the arrow to, towards the inside and then we have kind of joined that up so at any point you can use the cut profile tool in order to cheat a little bit and make sure that your wall joints look exactly how you want them to look keep in mind that this is just a view change it's not going to change the or affect the material count which is annoying so don't rely on this too much because it's going to mess up your uh, quantities of materials but it is something that can help you out in certain situations so there you go i hope that by watching this video now you have completely mastered wall joins in Revit. And so if you have any questions comments or suggestions leave them in the comment section below if you want to master Revit properly and want to take a look at my courses where i take the extra time to go step by step explaining all of the complex Revit topics check out my website balkanarctic.com that's going to be the first link in the description if you want access to all of my Revit project files that's the second link in the description takes you to my patreon and yeah that's pretty much it uh, thank you for watching make sure to subscribe like and share this video and I'll see you with another tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.